Okay, the last uh, complexity that we're going to add into the loan uh, notions is something called the annual percentage rate. Got to watch out for the terms here. I've been using annual interest rate all along, and that's different than the annual percentage rate. Um, this applies when you get into larger loans um, like uh, home mortgage loans. Um, when you get a big loan, like a home mortgage loan, uh, the banks often add what are called points and fees um, to the loan uh, in order some of the, uh, to cover some of the costs that the bank has to face in uh, making the loan to you. So for example, here's the third federal savings and loan uh, website. Um, this is a Cleveland bank that uh, makes a lot of mortgage loans. And look here. Here's a 30-year, uh, what they call a smart rate loan. It's just an ordinary mortgage loan for buying a new house. The annual interest rate is 2.79%, but they also quote this other number called APR, the annual percentage rate, which is 3.5%. The APR is never less than the annual interest rate. It's always the same or more. And in this case, um, it's almost a full point more here on this 30-year um, loan. So what's going on here with this uh, difference between APR and, and the annual interest rate? They just call it rate here, but it's actually the annual interest rate, the, the number we've been talking about in all the loan functions up to now. So now we're introducing this APR concept. This is important to understand because when you get out in the real world and you start getting a big loan like a mortgage, APR is going to become a part of the picture. So um, lenders often charge various fees to make a loan. They charge points. Um, point uh, is a, an amount they charge you that is 1% of the value of the loan. Now, now I noticed when I looked at the uh, uh, Third Federal, they said here all mortgage rates have zero points. Well, that's something that changes over time. It just depends upon what's going on in the marketplace. Uh, they can charge one point, two points, uh, or so on. Um, a, the other thing they charge are various fees, application fees, uh, that is simply an amount they charge you for applying for the mortgage. Because there's a lot of work in deciding whether or not to make a, a big loan like this to a consumer, they have to look at your credit history, they have to go out and look at the house and appraise it to see if you're really uh, paying a reasonable amount of money for it. Suppose you're going out to buy a $100,000 house that you've fallen in love with and you really want that house. They send somebody out to look at it, and they decide the house is really only worth $75,000. There's no way on earth they're going to give you a $100,000 loan on a house that's really worth $75,000. Because if you default on the loan and stop paying it, they'll get the house back, but they'll never get their $100,000 back by selling the house. So that's a lot of work for them to do. And they often charge fees uh, uh, for uh, applying for the loan to cover those various costs. So when you make an application, say, online, they'll want a credit card and they'll charge you a fee uh, just for making the application, even if they never make the loan to you. If they decide that they don't want to make the loan to you, the application fee is gone because it, it pays for all those work. So the effect of these fees and points is to increase your cost of borrowing. Um, uh, in a sense, you're borrowing money to pay for the points and fees. The APR number takes that into consideration. So when we go over to the third federal site, the number you really want to look at when you're shopping for a loan is the APR. Because if you go to a different bank's website, they'll also post the APR. The government requires all the banks to post the APR. And the important thing about APR in practice is it allows you to make an apples to apples comparison between two different loans even when the lenders are charging different fees and different points, the APR puts them all on the same basis so that you can uh, really do some good comparison shopping. So the APR takes these costs into consideration. That is whatever points they may be charging and whatever application fees they may be charging. So let's go look at how it affects the spreadsheet. Here I'm on the APR tab. And these cells all have names on them, the ones that are important that we use. So um, in order to keep them uh, clear from the other spread, uh, worksheets we worked on, I've prefixed all of these names with APR underscore. So this is the APR present value, and this is the APR years and payments per year and so on. So what we have is a $100,000 home. You're putting down $20,000 as a down payment and, and looking to borrow $80,000 um, 
uh, in order to buy this house. So if it all works out, you'll want the bank to cut an $80,000 check um, to the seller of the house uh, so that you can, you can buy the thing. However, let's say that the bank charges you $300 as an application fee. That's in negative numbers here because it's money that's flying away from you. And let's say they're charging you two points. That's one point apiece. That's the uh, APR, I should really say APR present value. Uh, let me change this. APR present value times the one point, one percent times two points. That's sixteen hundred dollars. In effect, what's happening is they are going to take this much money and that much money, the nineteen hundred dollars that you have to pay them, and deduct it from the eighty thousand dollars that they're going to pay you. So really, in this loan. The actual amount you're borrowing is $78,100 because they're deducting these things from the $80,000 they are paying you. Now, when you go to make the payments on the loan, you're going to have to pay them back the $80,000, even though you only got $78,100. So let's look at the loan. 30 years, uh, 12 payments per year, annual interest rate of 5%. The monthly payment is four hundred and twenty-nine dollars um, and forty-six cents. That's what you're going to pay back every month to pay back the eighty thousand. But you actually only borrowed seventy-eight thousand one hundred dollars because you paid them that money there uh, in advance. So, what's the actual annual percentage rate, the APR? Well, we can calculate that with the rate payment. The only difference is, instead of using the $80,000 that was the present value, we use the APR actual amount borrowed, which is the $78,100. So we're calculating the interest rate uh, as if you were paying back the $78,010 uh, at $429 a month. And that means the effective annual percentage rate is 5.21%. That 0.21% increase over top of the annual interest rate is what you're uh, in effect paying for your application fee and your notes. So no matter what they charge, let's say they charge you a $500 application fee, that means your APR is going to be uh, uh, effectively 5.24%. So no matter what the bank is doing, the APR allows you to compare the actual rate they're giving you um, compared to other banks. It, the, it's useful in doing comparison shopping. And when you're getting a huge loan like a mortgage, you really need to be out there comparison shopping uh, because banks charge different amounts at, at the very same time. And something I'll show you in uh, the one, tutor, uh, the one uh, sandbox is to use a website called bankrate.com because it does a nice job of comparing rates from different institutions. The important thing is to understand the APR shows what your real price is and it allows you to do apples to apples comparison because it takes into account these kinds of charges that the bank may be making as a part of the loan. So that's the APR and that wraps up uh, the loan videos.